five years ago, this video made global headlines. Servicemen from the Ukrainian Air Force marching towards their military base, which was surrounded by the Russian invaders. Brigade Commander Yuli Mamchur led the group. With the post Euromaidan military command still being formed in Kyiv, he had to act on his own account. The decision was made during the morning formation, but there were a lot of things that preceded it. There was the intense information pressure that was very much felt. There was a barrage of disinformation coming out of every pro-Russian channel. We wanted to show Ukrainians and the entire world what was really happening in Crimea. Seeing the resilience and the unyielding loyalty of Yuli Mamchur, the Russian occupiers threw the commander in jail. The day after I was arrested, representatives of the FSB came to see me. Six people interrogated me and tried to persuade me to defect to Russia. Their efforts were futile. After four days in prison, Mamchur was released as part of a prisoner exchange. Another high-ranking officer, whom the Russians couldn't force to defect, was deputy commander of the Ukrainian Navy, Serhii Hajduk. His superior, Denis Berezovsky, betrayed his country the day after his appointment. From the outset, it was clear to me that based on the decisions Berezovsky took, he was controlled from the outside. His decisions were contradictory. To us, they made no sense from the tactical standpoint. As soon as he switched sides, Berezovsky called on his personnel to follow his example. But no one did. This is when his deputy, Serhii Haidu, had to take control. We remained devoted to the Ukrainian people and performed our constitutional duty. To take another oath was out of the question. Ukrainian Navy vessels were given an order to go out to sea, spread out, and then to try and reach Odessa. But the chain of command was broken. Practically all the secure channels of communication with the military units had been destroyed by the time I took command. You see, communication over the phone is useless for the military. It's all out in the open. All of the communication was completely exposed to the enemy. Meanwhile, Russia blocked and seized Ukrainian ships. A tugboat approached. There were Russian special forces officers, but surrounded by civilians. And they stormed the ship. Later we identified those civilians as paratroopers of the Russian Navy. They knew the layout of the ship and were dressed as civilians posing as a human shield. On March 18th, while storming a Ukrainian military base, Russian troops killed Ukrainian Serhii Kukurin. Following this, Haiduk called talks with the Russian command and informed them of the following. I ordered the commanders of the military bases that if they find themselves in similar situations, to shoot, to kill. The Russians weren't very happy to hear about that, to put it mildly. Serhii Duk was arrested after Russian troops took Ukrainian Navy headquarters by storm. He was placed in solitary confinement. I refused to testify. I also refused to eat or drink. And that's pretty much how it was until the exchange. The exchange took place the next day, although the Russian military were reluctant to let go of the man who gave an order to open fire. Five years on, Serhii Haiduk misses Crimea. Crimea is a part of me. That's why I dropped my anchor here, near the Kiev Reservoir. Right here, standing by the water, I can go back. The former commander is adamant. The peninsula will be freed from Russian occupation because Crimea is Ukraine, reported by Lyubov Zadorozhna and Dolha Mikhailuk, UATV.